Hey, welcome to day 40. And today um, falls on a Sunday. And so we won't have anyone particularly fasting, but let's all unite our prayers together and start with the unity prayer. In the, day of the, uh, in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, amen. My adorable Jesus, may our feet journey together. May our hands gather in unity. May our hearts beat in unison. May our souls be in harmony. May our thoughts be as one. May our ears listen to the silence together. May our glances profoundly penetrate each other. May our lips pray together to gain mercy from the Eternal Father. Amen. O oh, blessed lady, spread the effect of grace of thy flame of love over all of humanity, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Whew. Um, I hope you will forgive my tardiness getting this uploaded and done today. Um, my poor little boy, uh, he's five and he had nightmares last night. So we were up um, in the wee hours of the morning and didn't really get any sleep. But he's good. All is great. He had two good dreams. So he told me about those two. Um, and today we're going to talk about excellence. And uh, this one is very exciting for me because I do strive for excellence. Some say... Um, oh, you know, Amanda, you're never satisfied or, oh, you're a perfectionist, but it's like, no, I just want to do my very best for the Lord. He's given me these gifts. He's given me these talents. And I really do just strive to, um, to make him happy so that one day I can hear well done, faithful servant. That's my goal. That's why I strive so hard for excellence. So I love today's message. I pray that it blesses you. And so let's get started. Many seem intent on living a life filled with ease and pleasures of all kinds. Life, however, was never designed by God to be easy. Even from the first, God made man and woman to work, and work we must. Many spend their intellectual energies and physical strengths hammering against God's kingdom, whether with clear intention or in the shadow of ignorance. From the rising of the sun and the long past its setting hour, they pursue their selfish or misguided ambitions, unearthing the far-reaching dungeons of the netherworld and piling heavy burdens on the shoulders of the holy ones, using the talents and gifts bestowed upon them by their creator. They work diligently and intelligently sometimes unknowingly, to thwart God's plans by fulfilling their own. Thwart. This is just another way of saying hindering, um, to prevent from accomplishing a purpose. So sometimes we are checking off the list, right? We've got all these expectations in our head of all these things we have to do as a parent, as a, a wife or a husband or a spouse or um, you know, just all the things, right? Uh, as a good employee, we have all these things that we're doing and we're working diligently and even intelligently. We're working smart, but sometimes unknowingly it hinders God's plans and fulfillment in our lives. To stem this rising tide, God is calling the Catholic world to spread itself like a vast and interlinked system of roots, drawing its nourishment from his living waters. Across sodalities, professions, politics, corporations, networks, and clubs, clubs, wherever the Spirit of God plants his people, we must push ourselves up through the earth to grow strong and tall, always reaching for the Son Jesus. Not the Son like the star, but Son Jesus. Only if we grow where we are planted can we change the world. First of all, I'd like to ask you, are you planted? Or are you still kind of on the fence? You got one, fit, one foot in the world and the other foot in the church because you can't be firmly planted if you're trying to straddle a fence. It's very difficult. With the precept in mind, that God and family and people remain always our highest priority. God is seeking excellence in our work. If by nature, inheritance, or misfortune, 
We have difficulties with learning or challenges with expression. God views our struggle and strivings as nothing less than human excellence. If we are able to do well the work he is calling us to do, then he expects us to do it well. If we can be one of the best at what we do, then he gives us no excuse for not being so. And those who are the best in their fields or expertise, without Christ in their lives, they are only a fraction of what they could be if they possess the living God. In every holy accomplishment, all glory is God's alone, for we are but dust. His light shines most radiantly through Catholics who know that they are little, giving them the appearance of being great. Oh, how precious time is. Absolutely. Blessed are those who know how to make good use of it. If all could understand its eternal value, undoubtedly they would do their utmost to spend it in a manner worthy of the saints. Nothing less than the eternal life of souls is at stake. God's pace for our work is steady, never hurried, and at times we must rest in his love. For the world tires us with its lack of meaningful direction and warped priorities. Uh, warped priorities just means it's a, a distorted uh, a distorted belief from the truth, a distortion from what's a true meaning, right? It's a warped, not warped like time warp, but warped like a twisted, um, dysfunctional way to view something. And priorities, you know, that's just organizing our lives. Are we prioritizing those uh, situations based off God's will for us? Or are we pri prioritizing them off our own selfish desires. So those type of things, if you find yourself just overly exhausted all the time, you might want to sit down and look at your priorities and say, where am I spending my energies? What priorities? Are they God-centered? Are they um, lined up with God's will in my life for me? Or am I exhausted trying to keep up with the world's expectations? And that time is passing, fleeting, right? But God's time is everlasting. And so that's why it's it, the work is always steady. It's never rushed um, and never uh, tires you. I mean, it does. God's work is tiring, but he gives you the strength and he gives you the grace to do it. So it's a little different. <laughs> <sighs> rest. So we must rest in his love. But rest is not laziness and laxity which are thieves of the Spirit. God has designed us to plow forever forward, doing one thing at a time and doing it well. If we aim for perfection, not out of a distortion sense of perfectionism, right? Like we're aiming for perfection, but it's not like it has to be my perfect for it to get done. No, that's not what this is about. That's a distorted sense of perfectionism, which focuses on the self. But a perfectionism born of a desire to do something beautiful for God. At least we will do our best, right? When we have that mindset, I want to do this because I love you, Lord. It's going to be beautiful. It's going to be amazing. And he's going to multiply those efforts. And once we've used our talents in his service with the aid of human means available to us, all that is left to do is raise our eyes toward heaven and say, Father, this is my best. I offer it to you. Please accept my lowly gift and by it, help me and the world to grow ever more in love with you. And I think, I think that's all of our goals, right? We all want to hear, well done, faithful servant, you know, with whom I am well pleased. That's what we want to hear. So we, that's why we strive for excellence is because we love him not because we're trying to get everything perfect or we think we're excellent, but we allow him and his excellence to work through us. Do you pursue excellence in your job, hobby, ministry, family, relationships, spiritual life, or something else? Have you ever accomplished something to the point of excellence? Did you do so for the glory of God and his kingdom or for a, t a different goal? 
what are the fruits of that achievement? Sit back and think about it. You know, what are the, the achievements in your life? And maybe you're sitting here going, I haven't, I'm not really excellent at everything. I'm kind of like a jack of all traits. And it's like, okay, then you're very resourceful. That's where your excellence lies in is you're good at many things. How can God be good with you through those many things? So think about where the fruits of your achievements have been thus far. How might you see your planning, actions, and outcomes changing if the ultimate goal in your pursuit of excellence is the promulgation of the gospel? Um, promulgation is just another way of saying proclamation, right? We're making a declaration of the gospel, the proclamation of the gospel. It's one of the mysteries of the rosary. So we're making a public declaration or teaching or setting um, forth an idea or a doctrine, right? Like our faith. It's a promulgation. Our saint for today is pray as though everything depended on God. Work as though everything depended on you. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> I don't know if everyone would read that the same way because some people would be like, well, I'm not good at anything. So what's the point? But you are. You are good at something. And you need to look at the gifts and the talents that God has given you and ask yourself, am I sharing my time, my talent, and my treasure accordingly in my workplace, in my ministries, um, and in my family. You know, sometimes we pour ourselves all at the workplace and in our careers, and we come home and pour nothing in our families. And then we wonder why our families are glued to devices or glued to another family. And it's because where are we putting that time of priority? Um, or maybe the same, th the same thing can go for ministries spending too much time in a ministry and not with your family. Um, family is so important and time is the one thing we can't get back. So playing a card game, your kids may be like, oh, this is so boring. But if you just make that little time at dinner to, to just gather everybody around for dinner or lunch or breakfast or just a, a evening rosary. I, I know um, there's several families that I know that do a family rosary every evening before bed. And it's tough when you have little ones. But I have found um, some really good YouTube uh, of the rosary that has kind of lullaby-ish music. And it just really gives this calming sense. And now the kids have kind of gotten in a habit of, oh, we're we doing the rosary. And they just all pile, we all pile up in my bed and do the rosary together. And, um, and it's beautiful. They fall asleep and then Tony has to carry them to bed. But, um... You know, those are my memories and moments that we'll have for a lifetime that we got to pray together as a family. So find something that you've been doing. Um, maybe it's a job, maybe it's a hobby, maybe a ministry. And just ask yourself, where are your priorities in your excellence, in your work? And how can we direct those to God's glory? And maybe you are doing that. And thank you because... The more you share that, the ripple effect that it will have on the families and the friends that are around you. So our scripture for today is from 1 Corinthians 15, 58. And I'm going to back up just a little bit. and says, death is swallowed up in victory. Where, O oh death, is your victory? Where, O oh death, is your sting? The sting of death is sin, and the power of sin is the law. But thanks be to God who gives us the victory through our Lord Jesus Christ. Therefore, my beloved, be firm, steadfast, always fully devoted to the work of the Lord, knowing that in the Lord your labor is not in vain. So you may not see the fruits of your labor. You may not see that person that was touched by you watching how you pray at Mass. Um, you may never ever see it, but it's not in vain because God sees it. Um, and, and he, he will love you for it and multiply your efforts. So just keep it up. If you get up and you're like, I can't be excellent today. I don't have the energy. Ask Mama Mary, Mama Mary, can you give me the grace to just give my very best today? And you will, you'll get the energy, you'll get the motivation, you'll get the inspiration from somewhere and you will be able to do that. And then if you go to bed and you examine the, your conscience and you're like, oh, I really messed up, then just get up and try.
Try again. Remember one of our words early on was just try, just do it. Just get up and do it again. So be blessed today in God's excellence. And let's close with Father Ignacio's prayer. This one is number five. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. I gave you so little, Lord Jesus, but you turned it into something grand. I am so small before you, and you make me so rich. I did not give all that I had wished, nor did I love you as I had wished and dreamt. I gave you so little, truly so little, and with such little enthusiasm and joy, nonetheless, you know that I wanted to dedicate my heart in that little. You see the depths of my being. You desire to give me so much more. Since you transform my poverty into riches and my emptiness into fullness, take my gift just as it is. Take also what is what it is not, so that my surrender will be total even with my own misery, and once more, all will be recreated by the supreme power of your love. Amen. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Well, be blessed. And woo, we are literally, this is our consecration week. Like, it's coming. Um, make yourself prepared for con um, reconciliation this week. And then I will post a video about the consecration itself. I know Liz talked about that a little bit in the Zoom. And if you missed that, don't hesitate to post questions in the group me. And we are going to be doing our consecration very soon. So uh, God bless you. Have a great day. And we'll see you tomorrow.